Hello, Nano Burger here, and uh, today I'm going through some uh, my old Instructables, and uh, I noticed that uh, when I did my Instructable on the Vivitar Ultra Wide and Slim, I did not uh, do a, a final operations video, so uh, probably four or five years late, uh, I'd like to get around to that. Uh, for those of you who don't remember, this is the Ultra Wide and Slim by Vivitar, kind of a cult camera these days. As you can see, this one has been highly modified, and you'll find all the instructions in the Instructable. It is a modified version of this camera, uh, which is a very simple point and shoot. Uh, the uh, cult camera status comes from its very wide uh, perspective here, uh, 22 millimeters. Uh, so, pretty wide. Uh, they've made some additional ones these days, uh, which uh, theoretically are the same, although there are probably some differences. But uh, let's go through some of the modifications. Uh, on the bottom, I put a tripod socket, so if you wanted to put a tripod on this thing, uh, you're good to go. Uh, that is in concert with this right here, which is a socket for a cable release. Uh, the theory is you put it on a tripod and you put the cable release in and that uh, minimizes the shake of the camera. Probably not all that important on this type of camera, but uh, every little photographic uh, thing helps. Uh, on the side here, I have two uh, washers. One of them controls uh, the cocking of the shutter, so you can do multiple exposures on the same uh, part of the film. And this other one here, which I painted white to differentiate, uh, is the bulb feature. So you can have the shutter open as long as you like. Uh, and when you do have it on bulb, you put it on this opposite magnet up here. Uh, that way, you can have it open as long as you like, and you know, if you want to capture star trails and all that fun stuff. Uh, the two of the later features I put on here are uh, this uh, filter holder here and the hot shoe. Uh, the hot shoe is probably the, the most involved one. It involved uh, going on the inside and wiring up uh, this hot shoe, which I salvaged from a, a dollar store camera. Uh, and it works just fine. In fact, I've uh, uh, purposed this particular flash here, a Canon AB46, uh, some early Canon flash. Uh, but what I did is measure the trigger voltage, and this was at 78 volts, so I'm not going to put that on any modern camera. Uh, however, on this camera, it's just fine because it's all plastic on in, inside there. So, um, you just uh, put this bad boy on here, put the flash on, bam. So, you can take pictures uh, in the dark or whatever. Uh, it's very nice to have a wide angle lens on your flash there because since this is wide angle, uh, if not, you'll get some vignetting on the whole picture. Okay, and this other one here is the uh, filter adapter here. We basically cut out a chunk of the, the front face here. Uh, <clears throat> and this is a Series 5 adapter from Kodak. Uh, and if you go on eBay, you can find these things fairly easily. It consists of two parts. One is this threaded ring here, and uh, the outside part is another threaded ring that goes right on there. And in between, you are supposedly supposed to put this uh, these filter elements. This is a uh, red filter made for this. And basically, stick it in there. It goes in very nicely. And then you screw it on here. And there you go, you have a nice filter, in this case a red filter. Uh, you notice the filter is a lot bigger than the taking lens, uh, that is uh, by design, so you don't uh, vignette the uh, image. However, the part of the charm of the Vivitar is the 
vignetting that takes place kind of naturally. So it won't add to it, won't subtract from it. So, uh, of course, these are built for this system here. However, if you don't want that, you can go on Surplus Shed and just get a 30 millimeter filter. Uh, and also 31 millimeter filters work in here just fine. I think this is a 31 millimeter filter. It's engaged and it will turn that, uh, put it down and you'll have a yellow filter. And uh, you can also get 30 millimeter ones. Uh, this one's a neutral density one. And this, like the, the Kodak one, will fit right inside here. If you're working some crazy high speed film or something, you can uh, put that on there. Or if you want to slow stuff down for uh, water or star trails or whatever, you can do that. So, uh, the operation of this is fairly easy. Uh, I've gone over before, but uh, one thing I'd like to, again, keep in mind is you don't want to put anything in front of the camera because you'll, you'll get parts of your fingers actually in the frame. So when you are doing it, so make sure you hold the camera by its edges and you can hit the button here and you won't you'll, you'll have the pink blobs in the side of your uh, uh, frame. Uh, the ones I have here, the filters are basically designed for black and white, so I got kind of a lot of high contrast type stuff. Uh, I guess theoretically you can get other filters, but uh, since I like uh, black and white film, these are fine. So there you have it. Thanks a lot and enjoy your modified Vivitar Ultrawide and Slim.